Hello guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's video of current affairs that can help you in your upcoming examinations like RBI, SEBI and NABAR. So here we have the first question, where is Jagad terminal located? So you have Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala in the options. Out of these options, option C, Maharashtra guys is the right answer. So this Jagad terminal is right now in the news because of this news that the India's first floating storage regasification unit has arrived at the Jagad terminal which is located in Maharashtra. Now what is this FSRU unit? So guys the floating storage and regasification units first of all they are the basically ships that are equipped with such a technology that can convert the gas into liquid form and then liquid to gas form okay but why is this whole exercise being done by the people by the companies or by anybody who transports gas because you need to understand this thing that gas is really hard to transport from one port to another port okay so in order to ease out the entire process of transportation this floating storage and regasification unit is used which is again i would repeat that it is just a ship equipped with the technology so the natural gas is loaded into the ship then it is converted into liquefied form and then when it is about to reach its destination it is regasified and the gas is then reloaded to the Port. Okay, so that is the basic function of this FSRU unit which has arrived at Maharashtra's Jagat Terminal. Now remember the name of this unit is Hoke Giant and this is India's first FSRU unit. Moving ahead to the next question, with which country has India signed an MOU for a long term supply of urea and DAP fertilizers from India under a government to government arrangement? So Mauritius, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Nepal are in the options out of which Nepal guys is the right answer. So basically the basic purpose of this MOU is to transport the urea and DAP to Nepal in order to address the uh, shortage of fertilizers in this, in this Himalayan nation. Okay, so Nepal has been facing this recurring shortage of fertilizers and in order to improve the agricultural landscape of this nation, India is providing this help to Nepal. Now, I don't think that there is anything that you would not be able to understand in this news because such kind of help is extended by India to its South Asian neighbors very often. Okay. Now, this question that we have in front of us is a bit uh, complex question, I would say, uh, not the question is complex rather the explanation of this question is complex okay so first let's understand the question what is the CAGR that is compound annual growth rate of agricultural sector during the 2015 to 20 period as per the innovation in India's rural economy report so guys this is an important report released by confederation of Indian industry along with an organization named Bain and economy okay so according to this report, India's agricultural sector has witnessed a CAGR of 11% during the last five years. Okay, CAGRs are important figures, guys. They can be asked from you in the examination. Now, let's move on uh, to the explanation of this news. So, Bain and Company is the name of the organization along with uh, Confederation of Indian Industry. Guys, do remember this organization's name because this can in, in itself become a question. Now, what does this report say? So, this report basically focuses on the rural economy of India and that too, the role played by the agriculture sector is the main highlight of this report. So, according to this report, the rural economy contributed nearly half of the nation's overall GDP. Okay, So, half of the uh, GDP comes from the rural area which employs 350 million people at the moment. So, 68% of the total workforce of India is engaged in the rural economy. Okay. So, basically you can say they live in the rural area and the economic opportunities that arise in those areas employ these people which is equivalent to 68% of the total workforce of India. Next is that agriculture is the largest subsector in the rural economy that we all know and approximately 37% of the rural GDP. Okay, guys, here uh, focus on this term rural GDP. We are not talking about the overall GDP because if we talk about the overall GDP, then tertiary sector has the major uh, share. 
in that but here we are talking about the rural gdp so in rural gdp 37% comes from the agriculture sector okay and this point is about the cagr that we just discussed that is 11% in the last 5 years investment in the agri tech space have also skyrocketed in the last 4 years growing at 50% per annum growth rate and now we have rupees 6.6 thousand crores worth of investment in the agri tech sector that is technology in agriculture sector and you must know this fact that many startups are coming in the field of agricultural technology which is in itself uh, helping the agriculture sector the dairy sector the allied services sector in progressing okay in this digital age so guys here i would like to ask a question from you all can you tell me mu pay m w o P A Y Mu Pay is the application of which company? Now do remember this thing that this Mu Pay is basically the payment application, particularly for the dairy farmers. My question from you is the company. So tell me in the comment section below. Next question is that over the last five years the rural ecosystem has grown at ten percent per annum. So this is the growth rate of the entire rural ecosystem, guys. These were the highlights that I found important. uh in this report that i have put he put here now next thing that is of importance is this figure okay so it is showing you the share of gdp now it is the total gdp of india india's overall gdp of which 54% comes from the urban sector and 46% comes from the rural sector but here this side of this chart clearly shows you the contribution made by different sectors in the rural economy okay in the rural gdp so the major component is agriculture 37% and second to agriculture is trade hotels transportation and communication okay which gives 16% of the gdp okay amount then uh, manufacturing is at the 14th percent then financial real estate and business services is at the 12th percent now guys uh, this is the data then you have the public administration and defense 9% gdp contribution and construction is at the 7% okay so this is the gdp contribution made by different sectors in the rural economy next chart that we have from the report is this okay so guys this part of this chart the first part of this chart is showing you the growth rate of the agri credit okay credit available to the agriculture sector which is growing at a cagr equivalent to 10% in the last 5 years so again this is an important figure and the number 10% is an important percentage agri credit because right now the focus is on institutionalizing the credit okay that is available to the agricultural farmers because at the moment we know that formal credit is not being availed by the farmers and this is the Uh, this is the effort of the government this is the target or we should say of the government to make the credit formal and to ease the process of availing the credit for these farmers okay so that their loan burden can also be reduced now we have the now these are guys the figures of 2014 to 2019 and how the improvement is there in these years now you can skip this figure in my point of view uh, you can just uh, know this figure that agri credit is growing at 10% of, of cagr in the last 5 years because these kinds of reports have a lot lot more information than this okay and if you go into all the informations then you may skip the other facts that are more relevant from your exam point of view and the the fact that may grab you more marks okay so here we have the state wise availability of the credit which state has availed how much loans and here remember we are talking about the farmers so tamil nadu agriculture uttar pradesh account for 35% of overall loans taken by the farmers okay then here is the uh, list of the uh, agri credit taken by the states okay uh, in terms of percentage during 2019 to 20 so here you can see uh tamil nadu is accounting for 16% of the total agri credit and then you have the agriculture uh, sorry andhra pradesh at 10% and uttar pradesh at 8% then the list goes on okay so here you just need to remember these three states which take up a lot of uh, loans the farmers of these states depend on uh, depend on the 
credit a lot okay so 35 percent of the overall credit is taken by the farmers of these three states only so here guys this report ends now we are going to move to the next question with which company has iifl finance limited collaborated recently to strengthen its digital footprint okay so clearly this is an nbfc which extends loans to the borrowers so now in order to expand its digital footprint and to give loans on a digital platform it has partnered with nira which is another nbfc okay so through the application of nira the iifl finance limited will sell its not sell exactly will provide its loans to the borrowers next question is which of the following housing finance company has partnered with csc e governance services india limited to provide loans to citizens through here guys through is the word that is missing uh, through village level entrepreneurs okay so here the right answer is lic housing finance limited okay so these village level entrepreneurs work under the csc system only the common services centers that were established by the government of india in order to extend the help to the people especially the help that is needed in the it sector okay for example you go to this common service sector to apply for a scheme then they will help you in digitaling up digitally applying for that scheme okay so all that work that is digital and the people who are not very well aware about how to use such the technology in order to enroll in a scheme or in order to get benefits of a particular scheme these csc centers help those people okay so they work in this manner and particularly in the rural areas they assume a lot of importance okay in order to uh, upgrade their lifestyle and in order to enroll more and more people within the government welfare schemes okay so here we have the village level entrepreneurs working under the CSEs and now with the help of these village level entrepreneurs, the LIC Housing Finance Limited is going to sell its loans, basically provide its housing loans to the people but at a cheaper interest rate, okay, that would be the benefit for the people also. Next question is who has been named as the brand ambassador of Bharati XR Life Insurance. So here guys Vidya Balan is the right answer and such kind of uh, appointments related to the ambassadors are important okay the next question is when is the world birth defects they observed okay so first of all this day is observed by world health organization and the date is march 3 what is the theme of the world hearing day 2022 so guys to hear for life listen with care is the theme and the day is march Three. What is the theme of the World Wildlife Wildlife Day? So, guys, option A, recovering key species for ecosystem restoration, is the right answer. Option A is the right answer, and the date is March three. And the last question is, which field does Alan Ladd Jr. belong to? Recently. He has passed away, unfortunately, and he was a citizen of America, okay, a native of America. Now he has passed away. So which field does he belong to? So he belongs to the film production line. He was a film producer and an Oscar winning film producer. And recently he passed away. So that was the news regarding Alan Ladd. And guys, here my comment to you all is please pay attention to the people, to the prominent people who have passed away, okay? And apart from this, uh, one more thing that I wanted to share with you all is that you can keep one newspaper as your aid, okay, one uh, base source is spotlight, of course, but you can have a habit of reading one newspaper in a day because that would develop your understanding regarding the current state of affairs, okay. So that was my advice. Pick up a good newspaper and if you need the list of newspapers that would help you then please uh, mention it in the comment section. I will definitely discuss with you the list of newspapers that you can pick up for broadening your understanding in different sectors. Okay. So here guys the video ends. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like the content provided by us then do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. Thank you so much.